as mentioned, I work uh, currently for government. Uh, we are a consultancy providing uh, some services, uh, mostly in the backend services and also recently in the Kubernetes uh, and supporting DevSop, Dev, DevSop operation. What I want to talk, however, is my own project uh, where I try to uh, build application using uh, Scala and Spring Boot. And while most of this was very nice and smooth sailing, yeah. some of the bits were a bit challenging, so I'll try to highlight them. What is Spring Boot? Spring Boot is a very compressive framework, it's open source, uh, to provide the various types of services. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the most mature kind of framework so far, uh, where you can annotate uh, most of your application code and just it automatically works. Uh, what they introduce in the Spring Boot is first of all uh, auto configuration, also called zero configuration, meaning that uh, Spring Framework provides a number of templates which just provide and uh, configure a number of things for you. You want an emailer, just include proper, uh, proper dependency and automatically just magically happen. Uh, it also has a pretty, uh, pretty uh, big e ecosystem when uh, a number of people, companies are contributing continuously to, uh, to Spring. And therefore, it's a very reliant application. Uh, the only problem or challenge with this is uh, a migration, uh, migration between the versions, major versions. Uh, however, there are also guides which are pretty well describing uh, how it works. All right. Uh, Spring provides you a number of tools, uh, provides you a very big uh, sample base, provides you the uh, I'll mention auto configuration, uh, st starter templates. Typical uh, starter template you want to use is the web star starter template, uh, which provides the web controllers, REST services, REST controllers. Uh, all right, how this works with Scala? Uh, both, uh, both frameworks are based on JVM. Uh, generally, currently, the ma uh, mainstream JVM is Oracle OpenGDK. I would suggest use the OpenGDK. The source base uh, is exactly the same. In uh, Oracle, you might find a licensed version and you might need to pay for any deployment in production because you usually want to keep the uh, testing development and production development on, beyond the same JVM. Let's just go for open, open JDK. Solves a lot of issues later. Uh, another great thing about uh, Java ecosystem are libraries. Two best examples is Apache libraries, Apache Commons, Apache Math, and Guava libraries, Google Guava libraries. Uh, I'm pretty sure every Java developer at least know Apache, and probably most of you know about Guava. Guava, I personally find a very nice uh, case collection, uh, locking and non-locking uh, collection could be used for many purposes. Uh, in my project, for example, I'm using lo cache loader to store, uh, expire after some time, uh, various object. All right, generally integration, Scala and uh, Spring Boot, it just works. Generally, no, no more uh, cabinets. There are a couple of issues which I will be demonstrating one after another, which may be a little bit challenging. All right, let's start. Uh, first of all, is the quite unusual way you start a uh, Spring Boot application, uh, because uh, you, need to pro you need to provide a singleton, like a Scala object, which has a main method, and then it starts the Scala application. Why? Annotations. Uh, Spring scans annotations after loading, it means every singleton class, the object class, won't be scanned. Therefore, everything has to be created from scratch. Framework then will be scanning them and applying uh, proper annotations to that. This will be very visible uh, in entities. Uh, that's another tricker here. Uh, as you can see, I'm using case class, which is a very handy class in Java. However, I define uh, variables as uh, variables, no, uh, not as values. Uh, why? Uh, Entities in a JPA, Hibernate JPA, has to be uh, setable, has to be mutable. Uh, and of course, there's another trick you have to use uh, is to generate a setter and getter for that. That's why the bin property annotations come from. And it, tried, it took me a little bit to figure it out. Uh, another way is how you annotate. Um, while the uh, Java, while well, Spring Boot run under Java, will find itself uh, annotations on the method on, on the, or on the uh, on the values itself. Here, the, uh, s because how the Java constructs the getters and setters, you have to provide on the field. Therefore, annotations like here, column on the field. Uh, every ordinary annotation has to also be applied to field. Here, we have an example with the generated value ID, like that. Uh, 
Another, uh, another very handy thing in uh, Harbornet, uh, Harbornet GPA, is the uh, collection tables. Collection table is just a shortcut for one to many relationships, uh, while the objects uh, are managed actively, meaning that if we delete the main object, everything on the uh, embedded collection is automatically deleted. Uh, you might like it, you might not. Uh, in this case, uh, I chose to use it uh, because I just don't want to, don't want to uh, bother myself with the deleting of the object with a subtable. Another point, in, that's important point. Uh, Spring Boot and JPA is working on the Java collections, not on the Scala collections. Therefore, as you see, I'm using here Java util list. And that's, that's another thing that took me a while to figure it out. Uh, Scala collections can be used with as Scala. However, we still have to remember that the uh, field has to be of the Java type. Uh, the same thing applies to all the primitives. Uh, long, if you, want, if you want them to be new label. Uh, Scala uh, mappings of, uh, of long is to primitive long. You want to have an object. Uh, however, in this case, uh, long has always a value being an ID field. It's not a problem. All right, uh, GPA repositories. Uh, one of the best things that Spring introduced is the CRUD and GPA repositories, where you uh, define an uh, interface or a trait in, in uh, case of Scala, and it automatically fills the uh, methods for you, and SQL for that. First example here, find by owner, owner account ID, just by naming conventions I have already SQL generated, saves lots of, lots of time. However, in some cases, uh, I need to use the GPA query, second example. I'm just specifying jQuery. Uh, if I really cannot do my jQuery, I can also specify native queries. That's the first, first example. Uh, but then you have to also annotate the, par, uh, the method, uh, method arguments uh, with the naming you want to use later. Here I'm, not, here I'm annotating uh, paramedia ID, um, which I'm later using in the, uh, in the native query. All right. And of course, uh, as before, I have to operate on the Java collections. A Scala array is actually mapped to Java, Java arrays. That's not a problem. However, there is one problem when you actually map uh, Scala, uh, Scala arrays to the primitives, like an array of longs, uh, because that's a specialized generic in Scala. So that's another thing you have to be a little bit worried about. Uh, therefore, the list of array of uh, long won't work, but list of array of Java util long will be fine. Another, another thing to find. Uh, oh, sorry, I, very for, I also forgot that the primary key also has to be uh, Java long. As you can see in the first line, JP repository, I'm mapping item to the Java long. That's another one. Uh, JSON objects. JSON objects took a little bit to figure out too. Uh, this, is, uh, this object is used for returning to user uh, JSON. Uh, this, 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 this bit is actually for REST API. As you can see, uh, as you can see, uh, I want to skip the null label fields. That's something not really Scala-like, not really functional-like, because I'm using nulls. And that's introduced the null pointer exceptions. Well, hopefully not. However, that's that's how the uh, Scala is. There is a there is a bridge uh, library, uh, Spring Scala. However, it's quite behind the current Spring release. So I'll suggest just to start mapping that in Java. Maybe the situation will improve. Um, another interesting bit is uh, uh, Java, uh, Java maps. Uh, this is the bottom, uh, the bottom example. When I'm again mapping from the uh, Java util map and then on the long array and of course to null. Uh, of course, uh, Scala being a JVM based, I can use all the goodies from the uh, Apache reflection um, or so called uh, lazy to string reflection to string builder. Very handy. Uh, that's, pretty much, uh, that's pretty much how you want to develop. Not writing that much code. Oh, and there's another problem with the uh, data. Uh, the, uh, because Scala is uses its own uh, data types, the, uh, data types, you want to use the Java local. Uh, Local daytime, I found that works the best. Then you don't need to have annotations like a temporal. Works fine. All right, testing. Testing is something I didn't crack yet. Why? Uh, Scala has very nice tooling, uh, Scala tests. When you're practically writing BDD, and uh, it's very human readable, especially for testers. However, they don't integrate that well with the uh, Scala 
Okay, sorry, with the uh, Spring Runner. There is a bridge for that. I'm, I'm still working on that. But there's, uh, there's a number of issues around this, especially about the order that uh, test executed. Therefore, I'm using a very simple thing, uh, which is just the normal uh, uh, Spring unit test uh, with the uh, properly named methods and then annotation, fixed method order, which is basically random one after another. It's a little bit hacky, but kind of works. Um, of course, you can also uh, provide the uh, expected class, like a second example, when the invalid JSON exception is being thrown and captured by test. All right, so that's pretty much how this Spring Boots. Those are five things, uh, I think the most important. There are a couple of more issues um, using doubles and using uh, uh, big, uh, big decimals. However, I think that is pretty much figured out. All right, the next thing bit, how do you want to deploy? The, one of the easiest thing in SBT is a plugin called called uh, SBT na native packaging. And you want, to, you want to leverage as much as possible for that. Uh, basically, you need five lines of code. Uh, you need to provide the GPA packaging, which you basically build a one jar uh, Spring Boot application, together with embedded web server. I think it's done. I like to add to my images the, some, uh, some scripting, like a bash or ash. In uh, Alpine Linux, uh, doesn't, they don't provide any bash from the start, and so just put it as script plugin. And, uh, Last one is Docker plugin. Docker plugin will pretty much build the image for you. You need to provide, uh, of course, the base image for that. Uh, here I'm using the JDK Alpine. You need to provide the uh, main class. Uh, you want to tag it as the latest. So every time it commits to, the, uh, to your image repository, it tags version plus latest. It's very handy when using any deployment on Kubernetes or any, any framework like that. And uh, Last bit is the Docker entry point, which is a little bit tricky because uh, you want to provide a security seat uh, for Spring Boot. It's basically, you can just copy that. That's, that's the easiest way, probably. Uh, once I figure it out, you don't need to go through that. And uh, of course, like I mentioned before, the uh, Scala Boot provides uh, lots of uh, starting templates. And they're creating lots of things for you. One of them is the defaulting to the app.jar. Of course, you can override it. Don't. Just use it like it is. Uh, and I believe that will be a very quick introduction to Spring Boot with Scala. Why are you using the JDK Alpine and not the JRA? Uh, you need it for Scala to compile. Okay. Uh, Scala uses a lot of reflection. I think it would be much bigger the image, no? Uh, no, the image is like uh, 120 megabytes. JDK. Uh, yeah, this is everything. Uh, everything built up. I think the current new application is like uh, 200 megabytes, but I put a lot of images there, things like that. And I also have a lot of communication with AWS. Other AWS libraries can be substantial, especially if you start using those things like um, uh, SageMaker, things like that. Those more AI-driven. I, I won't. I won't bother with the image size. That's pretty much it. In summary, it works pretty smoothly. Uh, there are some, some, some things you want to smooth out, but it's probably either copy from this presentation or from other, <laughs> just plug it work. So that will be for me. Any more questions anyone has? Yeah, probably. What would you define using Scala as a job? Yeah. What would you define using Scala oh. as a job? Oh, come on, let's don't get me started. Okay. <laughs> uh, Code is much simpler and uh, removes a lot of boilerplate. Uh, although you have to comment code a lot, otherwise after three months you try to find out what those two lines do, and that's a bit problematic. I also found uh, also find uh, easier to avoid null portal exceptions, but in Spring Boot because of this uh, Java uh, Java inheritance, I have to use some nulls as well. So there's a little bit null checking. But then options. Remember that options with the value null defaults to none. And that's, that solves a lot of things, <laughs> pretty much. So Java, Spring Boot framework, right? Hmm? Is there a Scala framework? I thought it was Acker. Uh, 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 I think the closest equivalence would be to Play framework. Play, yes. Play, yes. Uh, Akka is, well, Akka has a lot of, uh, lot of but uh, personally for me, Akka is uh, what parallel is more. Uh, I think the Spring, because Spring was the base of Spring Boot, was developed over years and years and years. And 
and Java is sorry, Aka is like five years maybe got properly used. So that I think that's probably. Um, no, well, Plays is plays play all right, uh, but uh, Spring Boot provides everything for you. It's like a really compressive tool. You have a GPA, there, you have a hybrid. You don't have to think about this, how this works, right? And in Play, you have a Sleek, which has this this functional way of uh, of wrapping everything in uh, BDIO, this kind of thing. It works fine, but you have to think of that <laughs> a little bit more. While the Spring Boot is like a kind of more intuitive. I think this is the maturity. The more you use a framework, the people have ideas. Oh, the first Spring frameworks were, were terrible. You have to provide an XML, uh, XML for the beam configuration. Oh, that was, that was really a terrible thing. Nowadays, you just annotate everything like a service. Hey, it goes. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Plus, inversion of control as well. Yeah, sure. Some sort of auto memory error. <laughs> so, uh, people use this uh, combination of Scala with Spring Boot. Uh, all right, you have the same problem because this is at the bottom. It is a Spring Boot, is a Java framework. However, what Spring does, and that's my personal experience, is have a very huge stack traces. All right, um, what do you want to do when you have a, this kind of problems? You run run profiler. That don't try to guess. Run profiler. I would suggest using G -pro -G -G uh, your kit profiler Java. Well, you can use anything else, and give you the stack traces. And the stack traces are very huge. Uh, Java ha and has this has this problem of wrapping and wrapping, boxing and boxing, boxing and boxing. Right? That's what that's the first thing. You probably know about it, so I won't explain that much. However, it's also have a problem of concurrency. You see, um, concurrency in Java is a topic for really big presentation. <laughs> generally, generally, I, I have uh, generally I something. Maybe I can tell something. And can if I have a, my laptop, which has uh, four uh, cores and uh, eight cores with uh, HD siblings, hypertrading siblings, okay. If I have if I have something like atomic long, which is used everywhere in the place, even around them uses atomic long below. If I'm modifying one, I have to synchronize cache on every of those HD siblings. Right? So I have a, a L3 cache, which is the memory for all the CPUs. I have an L2 cache on each of those CPUs and HD siblings, depending on architecture. Sometimes they are shared between siblings. I have a I have a separate uh, L2 cache, and now something comes like a get me atomic uh, long, and I have to synchronize everything. See? And that's why they invented the long others, which only synchronize on the on the get, so on the read. Uh, then goes to every memory, collapses them together. Uh, that's why they introduced something like a, a thread local random. Th that's the thing. That's the thing because the, uh, Java was developed when the machines were like uh, you know two CPUs, oh, two, two CPUs. I'm great. No, there are machines now with 64 CPUs, and that's why the ACA comes in. That's why ACA comes in, and that's why you see all the benefits of the uh, functional programming, because they don't need to uh, f uh, synchronize the cache, and that's a very big problem. Uh, personally, uh, I was doing some research bits. I had access to. A uh, big machines, 64 CPUs, uh, 96 gigabytes of RAM plus GPUs, oh, all of it. And I found this. I was running about 10,000 uh, actors on the ACA, uh, and I found this thing. If you start using anything like uh, atomic long, anything synchronizing, all things goes very fast down. And you also have, want to a little bit uh, tune it. Why? ACA, okay, another good, good aspect of ACA, it allows a lot of configuration. Uh, Finger, sometimes you need it. Uh, Typical example, uh, every, practically every thread uh, pulling is done on the stealing thread. It's a, f a fork join thing, fork pattern. Actually, I found out that if I change it to thread pull, normal standard thread pull, 30% faster. <laughs> so you see, this depends if you test, your, your developer might work on this one, and it's fine. Once you move it to the real production machine, ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's where the good Docker image comes in handy because then you can open the port for the um, uh, J uh, J Java uh, Java debugger profiler and connect to that. That's where it comes handy. That's why you want to do this configuration right. <laughs> Otherwise, the developers have to log in into the. Uh, there's no one, no one has time for that. You want to just connect to it, have a Docker image port open, and I see what's happening there. <laughs> so, but that's my kind of personal thing. Thank you very much. Uh, Anyone questions more? Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then.